Hey everyone, how's it going? It's Mir, and we got lots more information about Street Fighter 6 to break down thanks to all the new footage that has been flooding the internet recently. So uh, let's get right to it. In this video, I'd like to talk about one of the new mechanics that has been introduced in Street Fighter 6, which is Drive Impact. Now, Vesper recently did a video on the drive gauge and the punish counters, which I highly suggest to watch as they will be mentioned in this video. So in case you don't understand what they mean, you can go and watch those videos. Just like Vesper, unfortunately, I didn't get to play the game myself, but I've been hard at work analyzing all the footage that we have. I've been collecting information from various different sources and putting everything together to kind of like try and understand what's going on a little bit better. I'll put all the links in the description for the footage that we have in the video so that you may check it out yourself if you want to. All right, so let's start talking about this mechanic. Drive Impact, like I said, it's one of the new drive mechanics that has been introduced in Street Fighter VI. I hope you pay attention because I think it will be really important, especially early on during the life of Street Fighter VI, because it seems really quite good on paper. But I have to say it has some very distinct weaknesses as well that we're going to discuss later on in this video. It is performed by pressing heavy punch and a heavy kick at the same time, or the designated macro on modern controls, which I think is L1 and LB. It costs one bar of drag gauge to perform, and then your character will do this lunging attack that is kind of slow, because I think it's meant to be reactable, but has armor on it. The jury is out on how many hits it is. Uh, I can tell you that it's at least two. Some people say that it's three. But I can also tell you that the armor is only doing the startup. It runs out before the active frames. This means that this attack can trade with specials and normals, for example. Supers always break the armor, uh, regardless of how many hits it is. So that's a surefire way of beating it. You can also cancel into the drive impact from your normals. I think it's only your special cancelable normals. I didn't really see any non-special cancelable normals being cancelled into the drive impact. And this is important both on offense, so that you may use it to, uh, you know, keep your uh, block strings a little bit harder to predict as uh, people will have to look out for the drive impact. But it's also important for other situations that we'll discuss more in depth later. So if this attack hits, well, first of all, it deals some damage, but it also sends the opponent flying through the screen. Now, if this happens mid screen, it's really just a knockdown. So you only get the damage. But if it's closer to a corner, then you get a wall splat. And this wall splat basically guarantees that you get a small juggle combo that does uh, more limited damage than a full grounded combo. If you armor through a move, however, then you get a full on crumple, kind of like a Street Fighter V crush counter, for example. In this case, you get a grounded combo that it is much more rewarding than the juggle combo that I just mentioned. You also seem to get this reward when you get any kind of punish counter, even if you have an armor through a move, for example. So like if you block a DP or uh, you hit someone's parry recovery, uh, you are able to get the full combo that you would get as if you armor through a move. This will probably make it the ideal punish for a lot of these situations, as long as you're willing to spend the drive gauge required to do the attack in the first place. It's worth noting that when you armor through something, you take some damage as wide health, Kind of like Street Fighter V and armor moves. This regenerates over time as long as you're not blocking anything, so it behaves much the same way. And if you get hit, you lose all of it on top of the damage that the combo is going to deal to you. You also can die to white health if you don't have enough to armor through an attack. So again, just like Street Fighter V. If you hit an opponent in the air after having armored through something, since they cannot get crumpled on the ground, they get instead into the special spin state juggle in the air that gives you much more time to follow up with a combo, so you're still rewarded even if they are in the air. Now, this is where it gets interesting. If the attack is blocked, it crushes your guard and it's basically safe mid-screen. But if you have your back to the corner, this will recoil your character into the wall, which will then basically wall splat you on block, guaranteeing a small combo. This is very similar to the juggle combo you would get on hit on a wall splat, but it's much lower, so you probably have less time to get something very optimal out. And there seems to be some extra scaling, although I'm not 100% sure about that. In all of these cases, the drive impact will also drain the opponent's drive gauge, both on hit and block. It drains the most if you armor through something or on a punish counter, which is one and a half pips, it's one pip on a natural hit and half a pip on block. This is very important because the drive impact becomes even more powerful when the opponent is out of drive during their burnout state. First of all, this attack now chips you, 
just like a special move would. But more importantly, during burnout state, if you get hit by this attack or block it even in the corner, then you will be stunned. And this stun is much like the stun that we see in other Street Fighter titles where you see the stars around the head and the opponent character is unable to perform any actions. The difference is that in Street Fighter 6, instead of shaking out a stun and being able to act immediately, you will instead fall to the ground after a set period of time. You are stunned for quite a while, so this gives you all the time to get a jump in combo, for example, and get a lot of damage. Regardless of whether or not you successfully pull off your combo, then the opponent will get all their drive back when the stun is over. So now that I talked about what happens when it lands, let's talk about ways to avoid it. Because I know the attack seems crazy right now, almost overpowered, but I guarantee you there's a fair few weaknesses that we can exploit. One is that the attack is vulnerable to throws. Now, I'm not quite sure if the armor is frame 1, but if someone is using it on wake up, for example, to go through your attacks, then you can throw them pretty easily without much difficulty. It gives you a counter hit throw, which is not quite like a punish counter throw, which does extra damage. It just does the normal throw damage, but it's a surefire way to defeat this attack and uh, it costs no resources whatsoever. You can also use this on defense in case someone is using a drive impact against you, uh, but the timing and the spacing might be difficult, especially because it might change based on range, for example. But again, it costs no resources, so it's probably an important skill to learn. The other obvious weakness is that this attack is quite slow. It's not slow enough for well, you'll never be hit, but it's slow enough that you can react to it. If the attack armors through some of your faster moves, like your light attacks and even some of the mediums, you are able to block before the attack hits you, which also means that then one of the options that is available to you is to parry the drive impact. A normal drive parry will completely negate the pushback that you normally get on block, the guard crush. So what that means is that you won't be stunned in the corner, for example, if you manage to parry it. On top of that, instead of draining gauge, like it normally would, you instead gain some back because you successfully parried it. If you manage to score a perfect parry, which is the perfectly timed version of a normal dry parry, then you also get an opportunity to punish it because it will freeze the screen and give you extra frame advantage on top of a punish counter situation that you can exploit to do a big combo. Since parry appears to be active for in the first frame from what we know, then what that means is that this is probably a great option that you can use on wake up in case someone is using it as a meaty, for example, to uh, try and score big damage on you as you wake up. It's worth noting that you need half a bar to do a parry, so this is not available during burnout, for example. The next option is to do your own drive impact back. Drive impact itself is only a single hit and it doesn't break armor. So this option is guaranteed to score you a crumple as you will get a punish counter and so big damage opportunity. This is where canceling into DI from your normal attacks really comes into play. For example, if you're doing something like a Ryu crouching medium kick and you see your attack being armored by a DI, you can cancel into your own and guarantee that you will get the crumple and so punish the opponent for their attempt at a DI. This option is obviously more expensive as it costs a bar, but it's probably worth it if you have the chance. As one extra tidbit of information, if two players do a drive impact at about the same time, then the game will go into a slow motion state. This is very reminiscent of games like Tekken. The idea here is that whoever did the drive impact last will usually win because they will armor through the first attack and get the crumpled themselves. This is not guaranteed however when uh, people have low HP because like I said before, you can die for armoring through an attack if you don't have enough health. So this is a nice touch that will add some, you know, extra hype moments when there's scrambly situations of low health in the game. Another way of dealing with drive impact is using an invulnerable move to go right through the drive impact itself. Since drive impact loses its armor during the active frames and the recovery, if you have an invulnerable move that you can use and time it correctly, it can go straight through it. If you do it too early, you might be able to even recover fast enough and act first on your way down. Like for example, when a Ryu does a Shoryuken a little bit too early, they might find themselves on the other side because the attack will go right under them and be able to act first. Having said this, based on the version of the special move or the special move itself, you might not have enough time and end up getting punished. So this is definitely a high risk solution. If you want to use an invulnerable move, ideally you would use a super. As I mentioned before, uh, supers will always break the armor on the first hit. This is true for level one supers as well. So you don't have to spend a lot of meter to break through the DI. 
This is an especially good solution because DI on top of costing one drive gauge, uh, if it's broken by a super, then it will lose some extra drive gauge because supers themselves drain drive. Obviously, this solution requires you to have at least one bar of super, which is not guaranteed every time. So this begs the question, what do you do if you don't have super and you're in burnout? Well, to be honest, I don't know. It seems like a really rough situation. I don't know if you can jump out of the attack as I'm not quite sure how big the hitbox is. I couldn't really test it myself. I guess you could always throw it if you have zero resources as that doesn't cost anything. But the timing required then you know, the spacing could be very difficult to achieve, especially if they're canceling a normal into the DI that could make it very tricky. I guess in general, if you're in the corner during burnout, it just seems like an exceptionally bad time. So you want to avoid that situation at all costs. So that's about it for all the properties of drive impact. Now, I know that a lot of people are scared that the DI is going to be too strong. Uh, but to me, it looks like it has a fair few weaknesses that can be exploited, especially by someone who is proficient at the game. I think it will be absolutely a menace early on in the lifespan of Street Fighter 6 as people get used to how to deal with it and, you know, how it looks. But I don't think it will be nearly as dominant for as much as people think it will. Of course, as a final disclaimer, this is a very early version of the game. So what we see here could change very easily in the you know, subsequent versions that we're gonna see at events or, for example, when the game releases, finally. Regardless, I think this is still useful information to have as will prepare us to understand how the rest of the game is built around the mechanics that are already implemented in. I hope this video helped shed some light on what Drive Impact is and how it works. I've seen a lot of misinformation around because obviously not everyone had a lot of time with the game, so I tried to compile all of the information that I could in this video. If you enjoyed it, uh, please drop us a like, you know, subscribe to the channel. We always have more Street Fighter 6 content coming up. There's just so much worth discussing. So I hope to see you on the channel soon and I'll talk to you guys next time.